Great. So we have here a wonderful person in our Motivate Community show. Uh, so uh, this is episode 11. And um, my name is Ivana. I will be your host uh, during this short interview here. And um, I will share a little bit more about him in a minute. Uh, but basically, you know, this kind of interviews are here to help you um, uh, motivate yourself to do some things, yes, but also to learn something uh, and to um, self-develop yourself more so that your life can be much better. So this is why we are here sharing some thought leaders um, and spectacular speakers in our community. And today we are here in Shanghai, a very beautiful uh, city here in China. And we have a speaker that is, well, I was really excited because um, in all these interviews I was holding, I never until, like I thought I will now have someone from China. So, but then I realized, oh, he's born in USA, <laughs> but. That's right, um, ABC, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yes, so, but anyway, I'm, I'm really excited to talk with him. Uh, so his name, as I said, is Larry Wang. And from my Chinese lessons, I know Wang means king. Uh, so we are talking here with very uh, high priority person here in China. <laughs> king. yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yes, and uh, I will just a little bit introduce him, uh, and it's my pleasure yeah, to talk with him today. Uh, so, uh, he has been working um, uh, in China for over uh, 25 years now, uh, 20 in Beijing and Shanghai, and he will correct me if I don't, uh, if there are some small mistakes here, uh, but he has been uh, addressing career development. So his workshop will be about how to figure out your career path. So um, I I'm also really excited because this is exactly the area that I'm specialized, that I'm specialized in. So uh, how to figure out your career? Um, what are you here to do, right? So what is your purpose? <clears throat> so um, he has been involved in challenges in China uh, because of China's uh, quickly evolving talent market. Um, and he has also uh, and, uh, been, uh, he has written two books. Uh, we have so many similarities. <laughs> uh, so he has written two, high, two uh, career development books for Chinese professionals uh, on how to develop your career and soft skills. Uh, so, yeah. um, this is shortly about him, but maybe one interesting thing is that he has been working in a, also a software development company, the same as I did, and, um, but he has been maybe in a higher position because his company has been called Wang King, the same as he is called. So, so many <laughs> interesting coincidences here, and I'm... Looking forward, Larry, to hear a little bit about you um, as you, in your own words. So please share um, with everybody. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, as uh, Ivana said, and thanks for the introduction, uh, I'm an American born Chinese. My folks are what we say are from the old country. You know? So my dad actually is uh, Shanghainese. His house that he grew up in from where I'm sitting is about 1 km away, very close. Uh, and then my mom is from uh, Guangzhou, but I was born with my brother and sister in the United States. And so I think I'll just get into how I got into the topic of um, career development and particularly the part about figuring out your career, pursuing what you really enjoy, uh, what uh, you really have an, a genuine interest in and uh, even have a passion for, and uh, which is how I would describe what I do now. However, early in my career, right out of school, um, I was in a, a, a job that I didn't enjoy, that I was disconnected with. And um, the interesting thing about it is that um, I was in a great industry. I was in the toy industry. I worked for Mattel. They're the number one toy company in the world. Barbie dolls for girls, women for girls, and the Hot Wheels for boys, and a lot of other things, okay? And uh, I, was an, uh, a toy design engineer. Wow, what a cool job, right? I have a mechanical mm -hmm. engineering degree, right? But I remember um, 
uh, and I worked in Los Angeles. I worked from 8.30 to 4.30, longest days of my life, right, for a job. It just wasn't the right fit. I remember I'd be, you know, getting out of bed in the morning. Oh, I got to go to work. I get to work. I start watching the clock and just trying to like, oh, just keep myself motivated. It was such a struggle. I did this for the first five years of my life. And I remember very clearly, I was about 25 years old and I was going like, oh my God, this can't be it. You know, uh, I'm 25. I feel like I'm 55. You know, I don't have <laughs> energy. I don't have, I'm not excited about, you know, that much. I'm always in the office thinking about what I want to do outside the office. So I kind of recognized as my self-awareness was that I don't know what I want to do, but I definitely know what I don't want to do, right? And so I find that a lot of young people, they have that struggle. They might have the talent, the uh, capability, the aptitude. You know, why am I an engineer? Well, I'm Chinese guy. <laughs> I'm a Chinese guy. So, you know, I'm good at math and science. Yeah, it's in my DNA, right? So that's why I'm an engineer, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I have any real interest in engineering or technical things. This is who I am. You can tell I'm a more of a people person. I want to help people. I want to share. I want to consult and provide advice, you know? So I started going on my journey. And one thing I can tell you about most people's career, very few people, it's a straight line. I'm a teenager. I'm a fresh graduate. And I know what I want to be in 20 years or where I want to be. Some people are like that. Lifetime lawyer, lifetime accountant. But for so many successful people I've seen, it's a winding road. And here's the thing about a winding road. When you're here, you can't see here. You have to go to this corner. You have to move forward down the road to see further down, right? You can't see the future from where you are. So a big thing about career that really... I think affects a lot of people is that they feel so much pressure to have a clear career objective, a clear career plan. It's impossible for most people. First of all, we're young. We have low self-awareness. What do I, who am I really? What do I really like? What do I really want to do? Second, we're naive. We don't really know the real world. We don't know ourselves, don't know the real world, how are we supposed to figure out our career? So I take a very practical approach that worked for me, okay? So I have a very personal level, how I became somebody without any passion, totally lost and confused in a career, end up to doing the thing that I was meant to do. That's how I feel, right? And uh, so that's what my, um, my, my talk is gonna be on, how to figure out your career. A couple of key things or a few key things is like, it's not so much important, like, because like I said, you have to go move down the road. As you move down the road, you see more, you understand more, right? You realize more. But um, uh, the key thing is pick the right road. I was on a manufacturing engineering road. No matter what decision I would make on that road, it wasn't going to get me to a destination where I'm going to really enjoy, feel in a self-motivated, uh, self-driven, uh, feel like this person is bringing out the best in me, no matter what decision. Pick the right road. And one thing that helped you do that is identify elements, certain elements that you, no matter what you do on that road, that road, uh, the, the situation uh, will have those elements. The, the, the things you do will have those elements, right? And so that's what I'm going to be teaching it's very interactive. Um, there's going to be a lot of sharing, a lot of storytelling, not just for me, but I think people uh, who, who join as well. So this is always, I think, a great topic because it's really such a personal thing, figuring out your career and really difficult for many. And, you know, if you are confused, I always tell people, well, consider yourself normal. You know, <laughs> that's the average person. And I know I know people 30, 35, 40, they're still either lost or they're in a place. So one of my books, Know the Game, Play the Game, and this maze, Migong, I say it represents a lot of people. And whenever I show this book to an audience, you know, during my introduction, half the heads go like, yeah, yeah. They feel lost, confused, trapped, you know, dead end. I mean, it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. very kind of like, a, it's surprising how many people, even though they're in a good company, a good job, they really are not that happy. And, and the last thing I'll say, you know, uh, Ivana, is that um, the most successful people uh, I know, and I define success as being good at what you do, 
because that'll get you promotions, earn you money, uh, make you excellent, right? Okay. Um, so the most success, being good at what you do and enjoying what you do. I think mm -hmm. that's success for a lot of people. Doing something well, I used to be a decent engineer, but I didn't enjoy it. How could I feel successful, right? So I'm very big on trying to, again, it's about fit. It's about, you know, connecting, being connected to the thing you wake up to every day like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so you now shared a lot of things here, very interesting things. And the way I am, you know, looking at your book, this kind of maze, you know, I think that you are more on your path, you know, from my experience, than if you think I'm on the least one road, you know, and this is my life. I feel like people that are in this kind of maze, in uncertainty, you know, don't know what they want to do. At least they admitting themselves, That's you know, right. and then yes. you can make a yes. change. But for many people, yes, like that's right. Said, so I mm -hmm. yeah, I just wanted to share. Yes. So about many people, they have their parents, as you said, they had just one job, just one career. They have done it their whole life. Mm. And I remember, you know, telling my mom, because I feel like big career coaches start with jobs that really don't like <laughs> for some reason. And it motivates us, I guess, to yes. then motivate other people in the same situation later. But for me, you know, my mom would say, well, I have been doing this job for 25 years and you have been doing this job for four or five years. So why do you want to give up now? You, you know, you are just at the beginning. Um, you don't know much. Uh, but today, many things are changing so quickly. It's not the same as it was before. Uh, like you are saying, you know, um, your purpose is not just one job. It can be. Right, it can be. It's not impossible. But today, so many opportunities, so many things happen, uh, and there are new jobs yes. all the time happening. New jobs, so you cannot really say in five years I will be doing this, right? So I completely agree what you are saying. Like you need to see uh, what is my purpose, right? So what uh, really interests me, right? So what do I want to do, yes. and then being the best at that you know like developing your skills um mm -hmm. so yeah. just wanted to share a little bit about this but i don't know if you have any uh further comment on this well i i think one of the key things i always tell people is that you know job moves uh career decisions career moves they're not about you know right or wrong or good or bad mm -hmm. you know um they're relative they're relative to who you are your personality your interests uh, your career objectives, how you define success. So I was, was I, because I'm a recruiter, you know, I have a recruitment firm. I have a job. I offer it to 10 people. Maybe five take it, five don't. Maybe eight take it, two don't, two take it, eight don't. Nobody is right or wrong because everybody is different. It's all relative, you know? And so again, it's um, um, the first thing, if you're going to figure out your career, a lot of people, like when they come up to me and they'll ask me, should I do this industry? Should I join this company? is this a good career path for me? I was like, you know, and I, I kind of do that psychologist thing. I, I, you know, and I'm not trying to put them off, but I'll go like, uh, well, what do you think of that industry? What do you like about that company, right? Because it's all related to how you view things, not how I view things. So, you know, you know you're in trouble. If, if you have to ask other people what's good for you. I mean, asking people, for uh, information, understanding, guidance, I think that's fine. But you know, it's it's you got to figure out yourself before first, and then you start looking at what are the industries, type of jobs, job functions that allow you to do these things that that are important to you, or that you care about, or that can bring out the best in you. Yeah. Mm, I really like this what you said because uh, when we are trying to search outside of us you know for someone to tell us you know what should I do and fix me and yeah. uh, you know what is my right choice but this is your right choice right so oh, that's right. Um, yeah. so I feel like you know um, many people are expecting some quick fix for someone to tell them um, you will do this job for the rest of your life and it right <laughs> that yeah. you don't search I'll, I'll tell you something interesting i'll tell you something interesting so uh for me the first step was leaving 
the first step to finding out what I really enjoy is to leave the thing that I knew I didn't like, which is kind of normal for most people. We don't know what we would like or enjoy, but maybe we found like we do something that we, yeah, we don't, we can't see ourselves doing this for the long term. Okay. And then the other thing I'll say is it took me about, um, I would say eight, maybe about uh, six years to go from, you know, not knowing at all, but starting my journey to finding the thing that I was meant to do. It took me about six years, but the different things I did along the road, and a lot of them are very disconnected. At least if you look at the type of company, the industry, the function I did, but actually because of these three elements, they were actually all connected. They actually were connected. And every step of the way, it helped me understand something <clears throat> now now you're moving now now yeah. <laughs> yeah okay so we are back uh and uh yeah so what you were saying is that what you are doing at the beginning is not complete waste of time right so it is somehow connected yeah, that's right as long as, as long, to do. that's right everything you do but you i mean some people think that um as an example oh i gotta try all these things honestly there are some practical sides to if you try, like, by the time you're 25, you tried six, seven different jobs, no top employer is going to hire you, you know? Not because you changed jobs, because you have no achievements. You don't, there's nothing you really stand out at. You start, you stop, start, stop, six months, maybe a year. There's no chance to really build up achievements. Maybe you're learning stuff, but I'm hiring you not for your personal development, but for my uh, role. I need somebody who can handle the role you know, and I'm going to pick the best person. So you have to understand that there are realities too, you know, like that. So my workshop is really going to, how do you explore things, pursue things while maintaining your attractiveness, your competitiveness as a uh, candidate or as a, a person that uh, uh, people are interested in hiring to do both those things along the way of your journey. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so I think this is very relevant for anyone maybe looking to change their job or looking to find what they really want to do or um, maybe they don't have a job and want to find a way, um, you know, uh, to attract job that they want, right? So I feel like um, right. these kind of workshops are very relevant uh, because I feel like, you know, when you are unhappy in your career, that, that in impacts your whole life you know your relationships everything so i'm really happy to have you um to have you in motivate here uh holding this workshop because um the more we talk about this kind of things i feel like people can um really find their purpose do what they are really good at doing because this is for the best yes of everybody of everybody right we don't want wrong people in wrong positions yes. doing jobs that they don't like right because you know yeah. uh -huh. uh, this is then whole society change uh, happening uh yes. so as i said like this is just a short interview so uh do you have any closing thought uh anything you would like to share uh, at the end of this interview i know that leaving a familiar unstable I'm sorry, a familiar, stable situation that, um, you know, is uh, just a safer, it feels safer, and stepping out and pursuing something that uh, is, uh, you know, it's hard to figure out, right? Like, there's this thing that I think you might really have a passion for, uh, for your life, for your career, that could potentially bring out the best in you, that is more meaningful and satisfying to you, right? Um, I know that's quite scary. But I think it's the, probably the most worthwhile thing you can do. I mean, you know, you know that work, you know, uh, occupies most of your day. So, uh, you know, to yes. mm -hmm. be doing something that you really enjoy is really important. And in this workshop, um, I'm going to give you a lot of practical guidance and, and tips. And we're going to do some exercises that are really, uh, I think, give you a, a structure and a, and a, and a reasonable practical straightforward approach to uh how to figure out your career yeah mm -hmm. so sounds very interesting and i'm also looking forward yeah. to attending this workshop uh so thank right. you, larry uh thank you for today it was yeah. very interesting to talk with you uh so i'm looking forward to hearing more to knowing more about yes. 
this topic, uh, learning something from you as well. And um, uh, yes, I invite everybody who is in Shanghai, please um, uh, visit us. So this workshop, um, you know, there are so many different places you can be and uh, uh, many choices you have, but still like thinking about your self-development and what you really want in life, uh, you will thank yourself later uh, for sure, because I was on the same path uh, as Larry is describing here, right? And if I didn't take that leap, going into unknown, not knowing what will happen if I change my job, um, then I would not be here today. So thank you, Larry. Thank you again for sharing everything uh, you shared with us today. And yeah, see you on your workshop. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, thanks. Bye. Take care.